In today's business, credit is a very common phenomenon. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the decision criteria for extending credit period for the customers. So assuming you're a company, you sell goods on credit, your customers pays you after a month or two, and now the company is deciding to change its credit policy. For example, to extend the credit period. So let's assume that at present, our customers pay us after 30 days. And as per the new policy, we are trying to evaluate should we extend the credit period from 30 days to 60 days, that is from one month to two months. And if we do so, what are the important areas to understand? What are the important calculations? And how do we arrive at a decision? Should we extend the credit policy or not? So here I have a question. Okay, some important details are given. It says, uh, Change in credit period, what we are considering is from one month to two months. And obviously, when we increase the credit period, sales will increase by 25%. Now, when I say 25% means whatever is the existing sales, it will increase by 25%. So obviously, existing sales is given as 2.4 million. Selling price per unit is $10. Variable cost per unit is $8.5. Required rate on investment is 20%. Increase in sale will result in an increase in inventories of 100,000 and additional accounts payable of 20,000. Here we need to understand why we are extending credit period from 30 to 60 days. Because we want to sell more. We want to be a little flexible with our customers. If we be flexible, the sales are going to increase. So for increased sales, there will be an additional investment in account receivable. Everybody should understand that when I say account receivable, it is the amount which you need to recover from the customers. Unless you recover, your money is tied up. That's why we refer to receivables as investment in receivables. So if a company wants to increase sales, obviously they have to have more inventories. Having inventories means unless it is sold, it is an additional investment. A little relief is that you are also getting additional accounts payable, which gives you some breathing space. So what is happening here? Advise whether or not to extend credit period if all customers avail new credit period of two months or only new customers take full two months credit. So here the company is evaluating whether to extend credit period from one month to two months. And if it happens, so what will be the outcome if all the customers will take two months to pay, which is the extended credit period, or only the new uh, customers will take the opportunity of paying in two months time. So now we need to decide under two different options, two circumstances, should we extend or we should not. Now the decision criteria here is extending credit period is only advisable if the additional profit generated because of additional sales is wisely invested and the return on that investment is more than 20% because it says here required rate of investment is 20%. If you invest additional in working capital like mean additional receivables and inventories, so obviously working capital is not free of cost. Most of the times when uh, a company needs additional working capital, they don't have the money, they have to borrow from bank. Okay, it could be an overdraft or other short term uh, loans. So what we need to understand is at the moment, the hurdle rate required rate of investment is 20%. And we are talking about extending credit period. And if we do so additional profit will be generated. And if this extra profit which is generated by extending the credit period, if it is invested, the ROI should be more than 20%. So let's discuss step by step the workings, which will make us take an informed decision. So first I'm trying to calculate how much extra profit will be generated. So if we look at this, my very first working is for extra profit. To calculate extra profit, first I'll calculate contribution to sales ratio. Formula is contribution per unit divided by selling price per unit into 100. Now, if you look at selling price minus variable cost is equal to contribution, we all know that. So 10 minus 8.5 contribution is 1.5. And selling price is 10. If I make it into 100, that gives me 15%. This is your contribution to 
sales ratio. Now your question says our existing sales is 2.4 million and as a result of extension of credit period it will increase by 25%. So how much the sales will increase? Your existing sales the existing sales is 2.4 million increase in sales would be 25 percent so 25 percent of 2.4 million will be 600,000 so if this is your additional revenue sales means revenue contribution to sales is 15 percent so increase in contribution or increase in profit will be 15% of this which be and that would be equal to 90,000. So our first step was to find if we extend the credit period how much of extra profit will be generated and the answer is 90,000. Our next step is to understand if we extend the credit period what will be the incremental the additional investment in working capital so i am calculating that as per our first assumption number one if all customers avail credit period of two months this is requirement one we are looking at additional investment in working capital if all customers avail the new credit period which is two months so here we need to understand what is the average investment in receivable if the sales increases from 2.4 million to additional 25 percent so average investment in receivables for two months will be first we need to understand the sales are 2.4 million right as given here 2.4 million this will increase by 25 percent so I can say multiply by 1.25 so if I increase this 2.4 million by 25 percent that will give me 3 million sales. now this new sales which is 3 million is annual sales so if I divide by 12 I'll get the and obviously this is credit sales so this new sales which is 3 million this is for a year if I divide by 12 I'll get credit sales means receivables for one month but we are talking about investment in receivables for two months and that will come to 100,000. Now here we need to understand I used the word incremental investment in receivable. At the moment the question says the change is from one month to two months it's not that it's not that the customers were paying cash and now we are giving them two months credit. We were already giving them one month's credit. So what was the investment in receivable before increase in sales? So average receivable for one month when the sales were 2.4 million only before increase in sales. So if you divide by 12 and you multiply by 1 which comes to 200,000 so the incremental investment in receivable I'm writing here incremental investment in receivables is 300,000 the question also says if we go ahead with increase in sales it would require an investment in inventories of 100,000 inventory is also part of working capital so I'm writing here investment in inventories is 100,000 so this is 400,000 less investment in accounts payable which is 20,000 so your increase in working capital or additional investment in working capital will be 380,000 so if we calculate ROI our profit generated by additional sales is 90,000 
and the investment required in working capital is 380,000. If I divide and multiply by 100, I get 23.7%. So now you can well compare your ROI for additional investment in working capital is 20%, but the profit generated as compared to additional investment in working capital is 23%, which means your ROI 23. So if I, your ROI is 23, and your required rate of investment is 20 so anything higher than this required rate of investment is a green signal for us and if you look at the profit generated is 90,000 the investment required is 380,000 so what is return on investment 23.7 which means if all customers avail the new credit policy we are better off we should extend the credit policy even if all the customers opt for it the old ones and the new ones next Next, we need to understand what if we extend the credit policy, our existing customers don't opt for extended credit period, but only the new customers, you know, the additional sales generated, the additional account receivable, the new customers, they opt for two months credit. So should we extend credit policy if only our new customers are taking advantage of extended credit period? Let's see how it is done. So the very first thing we need to look at investment in receivables. Here we are talking about number two, second requirement. If only new customers, we need to understand sales from existing customers were 2.4 million. Total sales after the increase of 25% is 3 million. So total sales minus the old sales will give you the investment is new receivables. So that is only 600,000, which is 25% of 2.4 million. 25% of 2.4 million. 600,000 is for a year. So if I divide it by 12, I get investment receivable for one month and I'm talking about two months. So this is my new sales, new customers. Divide by 12, I'll get for one month and I'm talking about two months credit period. So I get 100,000. And again, if I go for extended credit period, investment in inventory is 100,000 and accounts payable is 20,000. So investment in inventories for additional sales is 100,000. So this gives me 200,000. And less accounts payable. Your accounts payable will increase as a, in a result of increase in sales, which is 20,000. So if I minus, I get 180,000. So if only new customers take advantage of extended credit period, our additional investment in working capital will be 180,000. So if our investment in working capital is 180,000, how much is the profit we are generating as a result of additional sales? 90,000. So your ROI in this case will be 90,000 divided by 180,000, okay, into 100. That gives you 50%. So we are far better off if only new customers opt for extended credit period because our required rate of investment is 20 20% and ROI as a result of extension is 50% which is way higher than the required rate of return. So ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the decisions companies come across when they're evaluating whether to extend credit period or not. All you have to look at is if you're extending credit period, what will be the increase in sales? And what is the resulting additional profit? Under both the situations, whether all the customers opt for, the existing and the new customers opt for extended credit period, or only the new customers opt for extended credit period, in both ways, company is not losing anything. In fact, we are gaining. If you have any other questions relating to extension of credit policy, please leave your query in the comment section. I will reply to as usual. If you like this video, please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. If you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe my channel and show that you value my work. Thank you so very much for your precious time. Love you all.